I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Review the agenda. I believe we've got some additions to make. I move to amend the agenda by adding 4.2, Mr. Mueller, and 9.7, closed session for further review. Do we have a second for the motion? Second. Yes. Move and second it. All those in favor of the additions, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll. Vote on the agenda as amended. We have a motion for that. So moved. So second. second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public comment on the board agenda. Do we have any public comment on the today? Okay, thank you. Uh, we're supposed to have construction updates with Dan LePan. He's walking in the door. Is he? Okay. Mm -hmm. you wanna just give him a minute or let Mr. Mueller go? I guess we'll make one. What do you have to say? She's been watching. Okay. I seen this car. <laughs> well, we were on the pledge, so. Okay, she's been watching. Tony, are you capable of shutting the unit then off? Uh, Quiet it down? Okay. I saw everybody's hair blowing in the breeze over there. Uh, <laughs> 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 How much grayer it is underneath. It's a fact of you. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's got things moving in here for sure. Well, Dan's coming. I will kind of give you some of uh, uh, Well, Dan is uh, on his way here. He, I will give you a little bit. Uh, so the front entrance is about done. They put the finishing touches on that will actually have to add a sign uh, that say something like this or Dauphers or Central Office High School Office in the front there where they have some sort of sign in front of it. Um, wall panels are ordered and they will be um, hopefully put in um, not at spring break because they're going to be themselves in the summer. Oh, don't bother sitting. We're ready for you. We're ready when you are. <laughs> Can I put my glasses yeah. on? You can put your glasses on. If you want the podium, we've got the podium if you want to show them around. Whatever you, whatever you prefer. Start off with just kind of an update. Um, I just received this. Um, it says exterior work is complete with the exception of the insulated metal panels, which will take place after school development. You see where we just put the paper up. And, uh, I haven't heard what it has since that yet. Um, also, moves will be on site over break to address punch list items. Rick told me they would be 100% complete by the end of spring work. 
I don't hold my breath. And, and that's all the pictures and everything that they're talking all about. All the pictures and everything that's on there. And the architect uh, um, has not done the exterior punch list. Yeah. Uh, Krause and Johnson Wood have completed electrical, mechanical, architectural, and district punch list. Uh, Venerian Painters has a few outstanding interior items on architecture and district punch list that are on the drawings of hardware school. Of course, on the exterior, they still have the pipe bollards and handrails at the girls' line that they have to paint. That's kind of weather for um, We've met with Mr. Candela, and he's going to supply us with a tablet over spring break. And I and you're coming in on the and uh, I guess whoever wants to worry about all the pictures and just make sure we're complete. It's kind of hard to print off 187. So uh, that's kind of an update on all of the projects. Um, of course, we still have the ash ball to complete. That's school to go. We don't know what happens. So we've got the areas we've got to cut out. We've got that. I guess it's it happened the way it did, so now we can try to repair those. Uh, we did meet with Jaeger, and he's aware of his areas in the parking lot that need to be repaired, so we'll be back to uh, after school. So, so. Um, now I guess, yeah, unless there's any questions for me on that. If not, then I'd like to move to the, the easy sheet. Okay. met with uh, Joe also last week and his finance staff and kind of went through all the finances and find ours and theirs and make sure we had everything in the bond, in the project, and in the budget. So um, we were informed then the bond available was 8.635 mil, um, not the 8.7 that we were working with. And that number actually had already removed all of your bond costs. So we didn't have to worry about that. So that's why you don't see that on this list anymore. Um, then he shared with us the interest that the district had gained, and that was 161000 And then we take those two numbers, add those together, and remove our CM fees, the AP fees, uh, the construction that's been expended to date. And actually, this is all budget, not exactly what you've paid to date, but what is, we've got line items for, and those are still your costs. Um, then we listed the general conditions, and I'll go through those after this. The 51.5, and then the contingency that's been expended at this point, the 74.3. And in my estimation at this point, you still have $574,000 remaining in your body. And I know you want that number, so you can figure out what you're doing next. Okay. Now we'll go on to the big sheet. There's quite a few pages there. Um, the first four or five pages really list each contractor individual. Um, I'll let you go through that at your leisure. Um, but I want to take you, I think it's the second to the last page. Category 23, it shows all of the technology purchases and projects that were completed by the district. And those totaled 159,723. I just want to point that out. We kind of pulled everything out of what you did, gave them, put them into that big category. So there's no longer a budget that's listed for that, it's actual expenditures. Then going to the next page, right under bid category 26 are the furnishings. And we've done the same thing there. We got a budget of 228, we've expended 236. So again, the budget's been removed, and we've just got your expenditures there. 
bottom of that page is uh, miscellaneous, which is really kind of your contingency that we've pulled out of the funds we've pulled out of that. You can see all the individual spendings that we didn't have in the category we really put that into. And those total to 74254 And then moving to the last page are your general conditions and uh, you know, dumpsters, toilets, surveys. Um, and that total of 51,594. So that's where I have you to date. Any questions? And right now, we shouldn't, I mean, we know that we got the items that need to still be finished or budgeted, so they're, they're in here. Um, I think we gave you as up to date as we possibly could that our end are the things that you might not have. Correct. The only thing that may be in here would be a couple of change orders that I'm not aware of that are in the works. And as soon as they get there, they'll be very into this question. But okay. you think that 574, 787 is a pretty solid uh, I think it's a pretty solid number. Are okay. you pretty confident that everything on the drawings and specs got completed out, outside of the two things you named off that weren't? If I miss something, let me know. We'll, we'll what about the rebates? Do we ever get rebates? Rebates, uh, I got to get fixture counts. And that comes from crops. How many we're taking out, how many we're putting in. And that's really all we need. One for one exchange. Now, the, the difference in the AZAC paving and Jaeger quote, I think it's 16,000 roughly. Roughly. Um, was Hendricks picking that difference up? Yes. I thought I did that a while back. We don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> we figured we'd rather have the teachers happy at us than we yes. have at us. Yes. Even though we have nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, our kids need that 16000 Yeah, for sure. So we will we will take this this information to our facilities committee, um, and that will be that allow us that allow us as a board to figure out uh, what projects that we want to do. Um, Dan, and Chip, and Jeff and have all stated to me that we probably should do all the projects, you know, maybe this summer, maybe wait. You really should hang on hang a couple on hundred thousand and just yeah. let things settle, the dust settle. Right. You should say, hey, you know, this is what we should yeah. really do. And we probably don't want to do all those projects anyways. You know, we you very much heard that with all of our last year. So we'll, we'll see what this facilities committee has to say. I'll report back to you guys. Um, we already have some uh, quotes for um, some items that we were looking at uh, as far as asphalt and those type of things. We had a couple other ones, hopefully by March 17th when we meet, um, that we'll have a couple other ones in and we'll do the, the board will report in April. These are the projects that we think we want to do this summer. So that's the point. And it looks like the numbers, hopefully we should be able to shoot. Just a reminder, you have three years after your last expenditure, so Spend money just next summer. You know, three years from now, we have some more money to spend. And that's okay. Yeah, three three years after that. So don't think, you know, if we don't sold bonds, we got three years. Okay. Good. Right. No. Any more questions? Does that just gain on that? No. It's no. not invested. <coughs> and and the reason why that's a little you under maybe is we had one hundred sixty thousand dollars in bond expenses. Well, that was already taken out. Right. And that's where that difference is coming in. That the bond expense was in the last one. So that bond available is what the actual So it already came out to 8.6. That's why the numbers are That's why the numbers are changed. From the previous sheet you got, sure. And interest, we only had budgeted 80000 We actually gave Dan the actual number of numbers. So good. All good for us. All good for you.
Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the report. Spring. I'll be back at spring break if anybody wants to walk with me. Okay. All right. Good. Good yeah. to know. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks for the report. All right. Moving on. Uh, Mr. Mueller. I guess I went fishing once or twice, but I realized I'm up to the other people's Yeah, yeah, we'll have to get it. I worked for free today. <laughs> 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 today. Um, no, I have a good group of guys to work with, some people are to try to help them become bigger, stronger than they have to do well. So, good. Um, uh, well, prior to address the coronavirus, obviously, there's a lot of hysteria about this. Um, I just talk about every day in the classroom and current events. Um, and for me personally, it, it's, it's a real nightmare. Um, because we spent countless hours on trying to create a one-of-a-kind experience for kids to go to Spain, and the wheels are falling off the wagon right now because governments are pretty much shutting things down. And just today at 3.30, it was officially announced on television in Spain that, that they were shutting down schools for the next 15 days in the Madrid area, an area that up until less than a couple weeks ago had no cases reported in England, Spain, all of a sudden, now there's about a thousand more, okay, as you're killing day by day, they're adding more. So it's devastating because we spent a lot of time and effort creating this opportunity, and uh, it's, it's right now it's falling apart, um, and, and it truly is devastating. Um, countless dollars are invested in this. Uh, my own family has six grand in this between my, my family, my wife, two kids, um, my sister, my mother is going. So we're trying to figure out a way to make this better. Um, I know there's a lot of concern uh, in the community because there's a lot of concern, period, worldwide. Um, the financial markets are joke, but um, I think you worked a little longer than I thought, dealing with the retirement <laughs> issues right now that are going on, and this doesn't rebound. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's difficult. A lot of people have thousands of dollars tied up in this right now. So in airfares, um, I, I checked Iberia's website, and it looks like they're, they're trying to offer some flexibility as of today, even because of the similar um, ordinance that are out. Um, they're a Spanish airline, so they would know better than anyone, you know, how, how safe or not safe it is to travel in and out. Um, so we're trying to, um, like on the fly, trying to create a, a different possibility um, that's safer for uh, kids, community. Um, I'm not even fearful of the virus itself, but obviously the aftermath of everything, the governments are shutting things down. Can't do anything about it. Um, kids are usually either immune or very likely not to die, but it's the older folks that struggle most with these types of things. So uh, no one harm them either. So anyway, um, uh, the update is that just two hours, two or three hours ago, I got that news. So now I'm, I'm frantically trying to put together something for probably the end of school. Uh, as a possibility if, if things settle down and there's no guarantee that will happen. But um, they go to school until late June, mid to late June, where we get out in the first week. So uh, at the very least, you know, if things are better, then we would, we would go right after the school year's finish as a possibility, if I can arrange that in the last minute here, and hopefully still have an experience. It's devastating to families who are going to miss out on the spring break that they look forward to. Um, if this falls apart like it looks like it is. Um, that's the news I have. It's not good news. It's, it's devastating for me and for everything that, that we've been working for. But I can't control the world. <laughs> a, a couple things um, to, to clear up or to um, discuss, uh, I guess, for the board in the future. Um, first of all, you know, my understanding of the whole Spain um, exchange, and, and everyone can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, is that it was going to be an exchange of basically what I see as a one-way exchange. So kids would come from Spain to ugly schools, but students wouldn't be going to Spain to study, like a true ex exchange um, program. Is that correct? No, no. Uh, to some degree, um, we're not going as long as they came. Because they came for for about ninety days or so. But but we are. They were in, intending to go into the classroom and to to shadow some of their kids for a couple hours, and then and then go in and to some of their English classes there and be a part of them as well for about a week. And, and so the, the 
question that is, I guess the answer to me is then clear or clearer that then that and that and I misunderstood it, my fault. Um, that then that becomes a school sponsored event, and if that's a school sponsored event, the board can dictate whether or not we would want you to go anyways, because now it's a school sponsored event. It's no different than our trip going to D.C. The board will dictate if we are going to have kids April 21st, I believe, if we're going to send kids to D.C. because it's a school sponsored event. So in that, I, the only thing I would say is in the future, is it looks like this is canceled and it's after school and you guys are going. In the future, that would still need to be approved by the board to go on that to go on that trip. Um, because in this in this situation, this came up, and if we wouldn't have proved it, and everybody would have went, and then we would have came back, people would have said, "Well, that was a school-sponsored event. You guys have the authority, as a, you guys as a board, to say whether that trip can take place or not take place." Because we are there, our job is obviously to protect students, the school, the school district, and all that kind of stuff. So the only thing that I would think that we probably need to do in the future is that if we continue this, you know, this coronavirus thing dies down, we continue this partnership of kids from Spain coming here and us going. We kind of approved the, the, the kids coming here at the board meeting, I think it was in May. In the future though, those trips would have to be approved by the board. And I don't know if it was. I thought it was. I, it was, I, it was, I just don't think there will go there. I don't think there was, you know, the, I don't recall, and I could be wrong, and if, you, if I'm wrong. In but fact, I don't recall, I, the one that I don't know if there was a who, who, for what, for going. if there was a who, yeah. what, when, where, yeah. the itinerary, what was going to happen. I, if there was, I haven't seen it. And that's on all trips. All trips have an itinerary of what the plan is, where you're going, what you're doing. All that has an itinerary. Um, and we, we would need that. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is now, but the board would have had to, the board would have had the power to cancel this trip, regardless if you guys were saying, no, we're still going. If you would have came here tonight and said, we're still going. This board has the power to say, no, because now it's a school-sponsored event. That is a school-sponsored event. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that in the future, that the board decides on this trip and any other trip that kids take and then they decide also on the health and welfare of all kids in the district so I just, you're basing that on the fact that they're going into the classroom too. they're going into the classroom and there is a partnership created between both the school this school and, and ugly schools and and ugly is saying yes we're giving you our nod to send those kids over my thinking and i'm wrong absolutely wrong my thinking was at first that it was a Parents taking the kids over, kind of like a vacation type thing. You're going to visit some tourist places, and it, and that was my fault. I, well, it's I happened. Was, it's happened. I, yeah, right. the other half, like during spring break, that's actually the parents were going to just go to school and go see right. it, and then you go out. Because I can't yeah. control what any parent in the district does on spring break. You can go to every any place you want. I can't control it, but we do. I'm saying we, as a board, do have the control once it becomes a school-related issue. And this, I, now I'm seeing as a school-related issue, it's, it's a foreign exchange program. We're exchanging only for a week, they're exchanging yeah. for 90 days, but it's a school, the school has said, we're sanctioning that to happen. So now it's a school-sponsored event, so the school now, or as, a, as representing the school, has the power to cancel that event, or to say, yeah, we're okay with you. I just wanna make sure that's clear. I think there was some confusion maybe on my part as well, I know on my part, um, but I want the board to understand that as well, is that you guys will decide the future of these trips. If anything else was to happen, uh, disrupting government in Spain next year, you as an example, you guys would say, no, nah, we're not sending our kids in. Same going forward, I have it on my notes for my presentation, same going forward for the Washington, D.C. trip. You guys will decide whether we're going to Washington, D.C. <coughs> I guess the only question I have about that, and I understand that, but how about reimbursement? So the parents have paid thousands or hundreds of dollars well, for any of these trips. Well, in this situation, I mean, that would not be, that's not under our, that would not yeah. be our issue. 
just as it probably would not be Spain's issue if these kids said, hey, I went all the way over, spent all the money, a kid gets sick and they send them back. That would not be ever our issue. Our issue is, yes, we look at programs, we discussed them, we, we adopted it. But when a situation like this arises, or any situation that would potentially endanger our kids, or endanger the kids here coming back, as in the case of the coronavirus, then the board has to have the, the power to deny that trip. I mean, that's just, I mean, if I sent you guys over and there was a and we knew, I'm making this up, I'm telling you an example, and we knew there was a revolution happening in Spain, we're saying, yeah, go over there. And you guys go over there, and something happens to our kids, then we're all gonna be under liability for that. And so anything that's the auspice of, and this would be no different than any school district. Any school district that is tied to students and the protection of students on a program that is agreed upon, Board of Education has the power to cancel that trip. And this, 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 for example, the DC trip is going to do the same thing right now because people are starting to invest money into that. It gets canceled. I'm sure it's they're it's probably already invested. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's already invested. <laughs> but we have to protect the welfare of those Absolutely. children and the yeah. welfare yeah. of the children back here. So that is our job as a school district is to do that. I just, it sounds like it's it's not going to work, and you guys are. You know, we're doing it after school, and you're, you're you're not there. Obviously, we would still like something that you know yeah. put forward when you guys do plan it. But in the future, I just want to remind people of that, and that's yeah. under me too. I mean, my own, <coughs> my own. I, I needed yeah. to rethink about this. Yeah. Well, I don't know. And there's and there's a lot of hysteria right now. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear out there. Um, yep. I guess for me, it's some community members who made some comments, and, and I understand we're being fearful right now. This virus is just part of this. But that, like, you know, if you were to do this, you're going to go to quarantine for 14 days. But even when you come back from spring break, like you said, I mean, you can't control it. I mean, spring break, you do what you do. But will we do the same for someone going to Florida? Florida has a coronavirus now. And these cruise ships, if people don't like cruises, will we do the same to them if they come back in our community and say, you know what, 14 days because you went into Florida, which has a coronavirus. I mean, I, I mean, it just seems uh, under, like, under the quarantine, yeah. though, understand one thing. Quarantine for 14 days, there's a, there's a couple of misnomers there. One is there's people self-quarantine. Yeah. So you yourself are quarantined. If there was truly a quarantine, I, I would I would think, and I, I don't know this exactly, I'm not a medical doctor, but the Huron County Health Department and health departments around the country are being involved in advising um, both schools, uh, municipalities, uh, colleges, they're advising. In our health department, we've received documentation from our health department that along with some of the steps that we'll be taking, we'll release to our community this week and let them know what we're, you know, how we're we're planning for this if it eventually was to hit here on county. But those would all those quarantine things would all be under the guidance of a school just said would take a kid and say, you know what, you gotta sit out in your quarantine for 14 days. Yeah. That would be all under the guidance of the health department. I don't know, I can't tell you what's gonna happen at spring break. I have no idea. I don't know yeah. where people are going and it would be too hard for any school district to track where every single kid are going all over the country and world. We just, we just don't, you know, we can't work that way. This one though is different because it's school sponsored. We're, we're, we're the ones. DC is different because we're the ones. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that going forward. Okay. Anything else? No, I don't. Updated. This, it's, we appreciate you updating us, no, and we appreciate you taking it seriously. And <laughs> yeah. the welfare oh, yeah, kids absolutely. is absolutely. always number one. So thanks for your yep. thanks for your update. Appreciate it, and it is very unfortunate. There's no question about it. Well, and as a parent of a kid that is supposed to go on both trips, um, I hope that you use the information. I'm sure you will use intelligent information not hysteria when you make your decisions about what you're going to do. I, I'm sure you guys will. Absolutely. You know, base it on facts and not worried people. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Where are we at? Yes. Review of minutes. Okay. Uh, regular meeting? Yes. 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 Y
Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Financial report. As of February 29th, our general fund cash and investment is 1.5 million. General fund revenue for the month, 765,000. General fund expenditures for the month, 547,000. Lunch fund revenue for the month, 38,160. Lunch fund expenses for the month, 28,550. Lunch, lunch fund cash balance, 118,673. February claim was 14,589. 2014 debt retirement revenue for the month, 21,371. 2008 debt retirement revenue for the month, $7.46. 2018 debt retirement revenue for the month, 122379 No expenditures for either three of the debt retirements. Debt retirement cash and investments, 2014, 58000 2008, 31000 2018, 337000 2018 capital building project. Revenue for the month, $599. Expenses for the month, $339,135. Cash and investment balance, $1.7 million. Activity fund revenue for the month, $8,330. Expenses, 17,481. General fund accounts payable, $52,273. Um, two payrolls including benefits of 483,000. Athletic 16,802. Credit card 8,691. Capital project 339,135, totaling 899,938. Thanks, Joe. Uh, do we have a motion to accept financial? I move to accept the financial report as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Administrative reports. Ms. O'Connor. Um, Mark just reading my piece on If you haven't seen the corral in the um, commons area, take a stroll through there. Um, if you have an opportunity to come in and read to our classrooms, we appreciate that very much. Um, right now, we have also have our family enrichment program going on. Um, Deb Wash has been the one that has kind of coordinated it. Ashley and Scott Mosner are, are, Mosner are the presenters for it. We have six families that are involved with it. Um, so it's a good program. We've had um, five of the six at uh, every one of our meetings, um, and six of the six in a couple of meetings. So we have one more next next Monday um, to go through with that. Um, as I mentioned, reading month, Kelly and Jessica have set, um, coordinated it very much to set it up to look at. We've also had a Wild West Animal Assembly. Um, just uh, got to see a chinchilla, alligators, tortoises, an albino pigeon, um, a cabbie, which is a rodent but it's cuter than a rat. Um, and they had the ability to touch a boa constrictor, which I stayed away from. But anyway, um, and then part of the reading month is during our morning assemblies, I'm reading uh, Leroy Meeker Saddles Up. It's a kind of a cute um, story about a, a young fellow that wants to get a horse. So I'm um, doing with that one. We have a reading is magic um, assembly on Wednesday. Uh, they uh, say that they will have the principal disappear, so actually that's going to happen because I'll be gone Thursday and Friday, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of works out with <coughs> Pictures are, screen pictures are on Thursday, um, and then last weekend on the, not last, this past weekend, but the weekend before that, the 29th, um, we had our VEX uh, team go up there. We had three team members, um, or three teams go up there and participate. One of the teams actually made it to finals. Um, and, but they had they only took the top four um, out of it. So um, Ms. Schmidt didn't really give me a. The kids told me they placed ninth of it, but it was hard for me to figure out the numbering system. So I, I would take it. But they did really really well. Um, it was interesting to see the um, collaboration between them. How they had to figure out that um, each team, whether they were experienced or not experienced, but they had to work together to accomplish a task that was there. So it was kind of fun to to be able to see that. We had the book fair last week um, with it. So um, with our Wild West Animal, we also had our PBS, so our students of the month for February were first grade, we had Blake Spicer and Chandler Smith. Um, second grade, we had Alexis Asatoski and Mason Warner. Um, third grade, we had Molly Haleski and Megan Moza. 
fourth grade we had Madeline Johnson, Aiden Marks, and Taylor Geiger. And then fifth grade we had Tyreek Esmaker and Kayla Vogel. Um, next week we also have, that's right, I'm trying to think of the time I said. On the 17th and 19th we have Lincoln Rocks where San Lac County teachers are coming in to just visit with our, uh, in our classrooms. Um, and they're going to work on one of the essential practices, the essential 10 um, on vocabulary. There. So they're going to come through for two hours, um, K-1 on Tuesday and 2-3 uh, Thursday. So that's <coughs> exciting for us to have other teachers from outside of our county <coughs> visit our um, teachers and see what great work we do. Um, and finally, my teacher recommendation, I'm going to commend um, Jill Ogursky. Ogursky, I guess I should say, because I always get that one wrong. Um, she continues to work tirelessly with our youngest and probably most needy students um, when they come in. Uh, they're not quite ready developmentally for uh, school, but she works on behavior plans and really uh, works to grow in their knowledge and in their behaviors. And she always makes it a fun learning experience. If you get into opportunities like that connection between preschool and moving into regular school and then kindergarten. So she, has, she does a good job of making it fun for them, but also teaching them a lot of the skills to get everybody from the Questions? Sounds great. Thank you very much. Mr. Warner. All right. Uh, so in the high school, currently all of the teachers have had two observations complete. We typically do three in a year. Uh, and we, we will be starting those third observations tomorrow. So we're uh, on a pretty good pace right now with all the observations for teacher evaluations. Uh, we've also had recently coming in our Michigan State Trooper. Uh, she's been doing, with a, a partner, she's been doing presentations on sexual and sexual assault and things like that, um, addressing some of those things that are, unfortunately, our young people are exposed to and trying to help us out with some of those issues. So she's, again, been a valuable resource, her and her partner. Um, another thing I wanted to pass along here, uh, I pulled some data recently from Michigan School Data. And what I saw is over the past several years, we have seen an increase in our students obtaining post-secondary education. Um, since in, in 2015-16, we had a little over half of our kids, 54%, go to some sort of college. Uh, most recently, it was closer to 70%. But the group that grew the most were those seeking a more like a two-year degree community college trade school. Uh, in that 2015, it was 13%, and we're over 25% now. So that number has doubled in percentage, which is good because we've been targeting that group. Uh, we want our kids to go off and get a skill, get a trade, um, do something that's going to make them um, more skilled, more, more profitable, more able to get a job other than just that high school diploma. So uh, I was happy to see those numbers that we're seeing that steady increase in our kids getting some sort of post-secondary education. Yet, yeah, not all four-year universities. We're also making sure that kids are aware of skills and trades as well. Um, next thing I want to talk about, lots of good things to celebrate going on in probably the last week or so here. Um, as you can see, obviously, behind you, I'm going to pass this around. Um, Mrs. Kramer was uh, good enough to print off all the things that were earned. Again, you can see all the trophies that she just brought back from state convention last week. Uh, a few notables, uh, Grant Geiger was the uh, state star farmer. Um, and, and Maze Guza was the state winner in public speaking. Uh, among, uh, again, lots and lots of awards there. Our, our lovely FFA chapter did quite well at states this year, which I would like to say is is out of the ordinary, but they usually do pretty darn well. So congratulations to Kramer and the FFA and everything that they've accomplished over the years, especially this year. Um, some other things. Uh, Shane Ostatowski was the state runner-up in the 215-pound weight class in uh, his class in, in Division Four. So congratulations to him on a great season. We had several other wrestlers compete at the states as well. Um, our boys are going to be playing for districts. They're going to start Wednesday, but of course, uh, our girls won both a league and a district championship. Uh, they won the district championship Friday night by beating Kingston. 
they will be playing in Mount Pleasant, in Mount Pleasant Sacred Heart, tomorrow night. So congratulations to the girls on, on that accomplishment. And uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and commend uh, Coach Joel Lifran on that one. He's uh, one of our one of our great teachers, doing a great job with uh, being back in coaching again. And I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, that he's doing things outside the classroom again and really having a positive impact on our, on our students in that, in that aspect. So thank you, Coach Lightman, for coming back out of return. Coach. All right, thank you, Mr. Warner. That's all great stuff. Tony. Some technology department updates. Um, as was explained in January, um, we have sought bids for um, an IP rate funding for replacement of our core network switch and some battery backup units. We're currently waiting on the application to be processed and then we're going to forward for more notes. They won't give us a timeline on how long it takes for that to be processed. My understanding is they kind of doing that right now. Um, last month we ran a lockdown drill using our new panic button system. Uh, the system worked as expected and we immediately activated our lockdown mode. Um, since this time, I've also con connected the system to our phone system, um, which enables us to automatically dial uh, central dispatch and some of our key administrators um, to notify them in case they don't see them. Um, so, not only does it send an email notification out, but also does an automated phone call. There to ensure that uh, contact is being made. Um, we are also again applying for the Michigan State Police uh, School Safety Grant. Uh, this time to expand our card access entry system to the preschool and the Latchkey building. Uh, that uh, if we do, if we are selected for the grant, uh, we will notify them the first. Uh, our furniture provider that we got the computer uh, desk from order the items, um, modify the desk to better meet our needs and expectations. Um, my understanding is that um, those are set to be in during spring break. Um, then finally, the last I have is we're all ready to go for the online MSTEP testing. Um, I implemented the last update that we needed for that uh, today, so are there any changes from the state or anything? Um, everything's all set. Most students in grades three through five will be testing in the PC lab, and uh, grades eight and higher will be testing on practice. That's all I have. Questions for Tony? All right, thank you, Tony. Uh, I only have a few things. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a facilities committee uh, meeting scheduled for March 17th at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's Brad, Joe, and So six o'clock, and then uh, if you sit on policy committee, uh, the principals might want to put this down too. I have uh, April 23rd at six o'clock. Um, that policy committee it would be twofold. One, it would look at our Neola spring update, so we'd review the spring update, and then two, we would do handbooks, any technology changes, and athletic changes. So then we would bring that to the May board meeting and approve all that, those items, uh, except the all of the anniversary, uh, and then approve those items for next year. So April 23rd, if you're on policy, 6 o'clock, Neola Handbook Athletics Technology. Uh, I will meet tomorrow with the bus drivers. Uh, we'll start our contract talks. Uh, that's at 8 a.m. Uh, board Scholarship Committee. I gave you some information on that uh, to look at. Uh, if you want to make some tweaks, you guys can talk about that. But that board scholarship committee probably needs to meet um, in April. When is our board assembly? Do you know that, Jeremy? May 6th. May 6th. <laughs> May 6th is the award assembly, so we need to have that for the April board meeting. Um, so you guys can approve that. Uh, as Mr. Warner mentioned, regionals are tomorrow at Mount Pleasant at 6, Boys District Wednesday at USA is at 7. The high school play, which Tony did not even mention, and he is the director, is March 20th through the 22nd. And uh, looking forward to that. Uh, a couple other things uh, that Mr. Warner um, didn't mention, so I'll mention. Uh, 
the girls winning the district was the first time in history. I'm taking this from the paper and you know, they're a reliable source, uh, which I think they are. That that's the first time that we've won both the league and the district in school district. That's what Mr. White Yes. So it's never happened before. So think about that. We've been around a fairly long time. And it's never happened. So pretty awesome to think about that. Uh, and then in school history, we've never had a state runner up in wrestling. So another school history. Um, three students just to mention um, Mays Guzza, uh, Green Hand, <coughs> we can even see the, they all did great. <coughs> three students I'm picking out. Um, because I got the opportunity to be there Thursday and Friday morning. I'm going to actually mention a fourth student. Uh, so Mays, great job, public speaking. Um, last month, if you had an opportunity, she was here for our board meeting, giving our speech to a few of us. Great job. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Danielle Albright was a uh, 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 star farmer um, finalist. Uh, she was on stage. I think she was one of three. So think about all the FFA programs in the state of Michigan. You think we had one kid up there that was one of three. And then, of course, Grant Geiger was the state winner uh, for Star of Armor Award. I think it was in production. And think about that. So of all the programs in the state of FFA, and there's a lot, of them, we had two kids on stage. And it was just nice to be there, to see their parents, and see Grant's face, and see Danielle's face, and Mays' face. And then the last shout out, uh, we, Mr. Warner and I, had the opportunity to see um, Kaylee Boozer's last presentation. And uh, I pulled, uh, it was kind of like uh, Thursday, we took off around 3.30, and got there at 5.30, it was, they call it VIP. You get to walk around and see the kids and talk to the kids. So I happened to like to mingle around and talk to people, kind of like the, the politics part of it. And, uh, I talked to a few people that I knew that were in charge of FFA and kind of the big wigs of FFA. And I kind of talked a little bit about, you know, how is Haley goes out? She did. I couldn't hear enough positive of how well she ran as president of FFA and how well she represented others. So congratulations to Haley. She did an outstanding job serving as president and representing others. So fantastic. Uh, I'll talk a little bit, you know, I, I, I just want to mention just a tiny bit about the coronavirus. Um, tomorrow I am meeting with the staff. We're talking about uh, uh, a little bit about that. Our admin team has met. Um, I don't know what time I texted you. I know it was late. Midnight. midnight. I texted Tony midnight and said, hey, that was about two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Said, it's our plan. I think of a plan. Um, so we kind of talked as an admin team, we got a little plan put together of how we can possibly continue education of our kids. If this was to come to Huron County and they had to close schools, what would we do? So we'll present that plan, talk about that. We're in the beginning stages of this. Um, we'll take ideas, obviously, from our teaching staff when we talk to them tomorrow. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, when it's raining, you plan to take an umbrella out so. So I hope this never comes to Huron County, but if it does um, come to Huron County, we want to have a plan for our kids and how we can keep that education part going. So we're going to talk to our staff tomorrow, lay out some details. I'll take a couple days of information um, from them, emails back and forth if they want to provide that. And then Friday, I'd like to put something out on the website and then um, something out in our Friday folders to our kids um, to send home to parents. Now, I will say the majority of that information will come right from the health department. And it'll give us, uh, allow you to uh, access links that you can go and find out more information. And then on the bottom half, we'll talk a little bit about how we would continue education if, if there was something that, that actually shut us down here on county. So that's kind of get we're, what we're going to put out. I'm not here to panic anybody and get everybody all up, up and up and roar over. It's just, it's best to have a plan. And we will put a plan out tomorrow to the teachers, and we'll take their input for the next couple of days, and then we'll we'll get that out to the community um, by Friday, and then we'll, we'll go forward and we'll see what happens. But uh, and that plan will always, like anything, is always evolving. It may change a month from now, but we do have a, something in place that I think will work, um, and um, and we'll we'll deal with it if it comes. That's all I have.
Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, no old business, so we'll move on to the action items. Uh, the 2020-2021 calendar, which everybody should have gotten a copy of in their email. 2021 calendar, the only a couple changes. We're kind of re-looking at uh, our uh, professional development and how we're doing that. We used to do uh, just five days of professional development, three in, the, in August, and then one at... Uh, Deer season day or November 15th day and then one in um, February. We kind of really think that uh, we'd like to change that just a little bit just to, so that we're always continuously learning, always continuously as much as we possibly can to have um, professional development. So we talked with the UEA and we came up with this plan of we're having a couple at the beginning of the year. Um, it sounds like um, the ISD on this because the county's off, it sounds like we're gonna have our countywide PD every year now on that PD on uh, February or November 15th or whenever that deer season day. And then we're gonna have four half days throughout the year that our teachers are continuously learning. I mean, we've got math we're gonna talk about, we've got reading we're gonna talk about, we're gonna have writing we're gonna talk about. And Jeremy wants to talk about some sciences and he's doing some restorative practice stuff. So we've got lots of things going on and we wanna continue that professional development. So I think, I think that's the biggest change um, in the calendar. Again, as you guys know, the county applied for a waiver to start school before Labor Day. Um, this is the last year of that waiver. I don't know if as a group of superintendents in the, in the ISD if we're gonna decide to do that again, um, but we did apply for it and all the same, all the schools are starting before Labor Day. Um, it does get us out a little bit earlier, but this year we're out the fifth or the fourth. Um, next year, I think we're as late as the 10th, um, but um, that's about the only changes we have in the calendar. Student changes on the President's Day? President's yeah, Day President's Day weekend. weekend, we, we want to, you know, when you don't have a lot of snow days, that, that uh, can that, that need to get a little break. They need sometimes just a little break, and I think that little mid-winter break is not a bad time to give kids and parents and stuff just some time to just get away from the school and get away and, and uh, enjoy each other's company and I think that's good to have that place. I move to approve the 2020-2021 calendar as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion on it? Um, I just have a question. October, you have second or ninth as a half day. There's no, not second. Uh, there that has to do with the student release for those uh, uh, PD because we had or for those uh, progress records. The one thing that we did change is Wednesday the seventh. It used to be Thursday the seventh was student release. Um, the eighth we changed that to the seventh for the fact of there's a I guess there's a bunch of home games. Um, girls basketball, girls volleyball plays Harbor Beach, and boys football plays away. And that's just not good for parents not to be able to see their their kids. Um, do you know that release, uh, Krista? On the 7th? No, no, the 7th is student release for parent-teacher conferences. Oh, okay. Are you referring to the 2nd or the ninth? Right. Doesn't that have to deal with the it's a game whatever game, the way is, game is, right? Way football. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. So okay. whatever one's the Whatever away one's football. away, that's why it's got a way game. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right, so move and second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, approval of bid for site work at the Ag building. Okay, um, so we put out for bid uh, site work for the Ag building. Um, a couple things I want to talk about on the Ag building, just so you guys are clear. Um, so the, the barn, has a revenue of $52,645 right now. So that's what's in their account. So they have $52,645. Sorry. They have expensed $28,28. And that's already been paid for. So that's done. We still got $52,000. $2,828 to DTE to hook up the power. So DTE's hooked the power. Uh, if you accept the bid tonight, for soil preparation, that would be twenty-one thousand. 
that would leave us a total of 31,645. Um, we, we had some electrical bids. Um, all, quite a few of them were very high and one came in at around four grand. Uh, but I haven't put it forward for accepting the bid. We we'll, we'll do that once we do the construction. So that's 4,000. Um, what I don't have for you, unfortunately, is, and I had talked to the person that was supposed to give me the bid, obviously I didn't get it, I did get a text message that I would have it late tonight, um, is the construction of the barn. So what's the barn um, cost, the, the package, um, and then what would it be, I don't know what he's, what he's charging to put that up, or how much he's charging. Um, a, a few things on the ag building that everybody needs to know is a lot of it is donated work, donated supplies, donated materials. Um, so I don't have that cost. Um, so what I'm saying to you tonight is you could approve the preparation of the soil if you accept the, the Nichols bid and then we'll wait to get the package and then April board meeting if the package falls within the range and, and all that kind of stuff that meets you guys specifications, we do the electrical as well. Then you could prove that at April's meeting and then everything's well, then you know everything's set and they can go to build. I don't know how long the project's gonna take to build, um, but that's kind of my best option to give you tonight is to try to at least get the site work approved. That money's in there. There still would be thirty one thousand six forty five left. Um, and I know they think that's enough to cover. I, shower, I don't know. Well, but, but, and and labor. and I'm thinking that um, a couple things. Here's what I'm thinking. A couple things. One, there's probably some more donations yet to come. And two, we probably are going to have some skin in the game with the school district. Um, what we're all trying to figure is how much skin in the game is that. You know, and I, I can't give you that answer tonight. I don't know how much that will be. Do we need to approve the site work or can it wait till we had like a proposal put together? Well, my only part is, is I know that for, my only thing that I would caution on that is, I know Mr. Nickel gets pretty busy and, you know, he's doing this on side time and other, you know, he's doing that kind of stuff. My concern would be is if we have a package, we have the site work, and it's not done, and we wait till April's more meeting, and Mr. Nickel comes back and says, sorry, um, I'm off doing roads or whatever he's doing. Well, now we have no site work done, the building's sitting there, and we don't know. That's my only concern, unless we call a special board meeting and, and go that way. That would be my only concern is, I don't know Mr. Nichols. I don't know how busy he is this spring. I have no clue. What, what kind of amount would you estimate that out of bond money or general fund that it's going to have to contribute? I'm going to say um, 10000 That's what I'm going to ask. Anyway. Um, and, you know, because here's the other thing, Joe, is I don't know all the details of what's being donated, what's not being right. donated. Right. I, I, I don't know all those details. I know some details, but it would not be wise for me to mention some of those details. It wouldn't be fair to those people. Um, but I know I don't know all the details of what's being donated, what's not being donated. You know, I, mean, I don't even know what the shell to build. I wish I had that. I was hoping to have that tonight. Well, in my opinion here, with the with the budget that they have, with what we're talking with the site work, which is obviously more than enough to cover it. Worst case scenario is they continue to fundraise. We have the site prepped, and they don't get to start building on it in April. Right, they might start in July or June. The site will always yeah. be there and ready to go when the funds are there. Amend your building to make it so that you can build the building with the money that you have. Possibly, right. I it guess would be nice though, like in the next meeting, we kind of have a plan instead of just shooting from the hip. It's you know everything laid out, like who's pledging these donations, just so we can put it on a piece of paper. And say, yep, that makes sense. Let's do it. Yeah, it's definitely unfortunate we don't have that building yet. Mm -hmm. And that's been going up for quite some time. That, I don't know why that hasn't been turned in yet. But it's, again, it's donated time, so it's 
Maybe they don't have the time. Maybe. <laughs> Possibility. That's, I mean, that, that's, that's what happens with these projects. That's what well, when you're doing a lot of donating and that kind of stuff, you know, I can't, you know, it's hard for me to be real pushy with people. Sure. You have to just sit back and let it come to you. Well, I guess that's my opinion. I mean, the dollars are there to get the site done. I say, why not get the site done? And eventually, the dollars will be there to build something. And probably the longer it sits, the better it settles, the better it is for a build. Plus, some of the people that are probably going to help with some of the site work are going to get busy. busy. Yeah. <laughs> real busy. Get busy. Yeah. That's my only concern is they get real busy and they're gonna, their own stuff takes priority over ours. Okay. Well, do we have a motion? <laughs> I move that we approve the bid of twenty-one thousand to Nickel and Sons Incorporated for the site work for the iron. Do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Move by Ryan, second by Tammy. Any further discussion on the subject? Hearing none. Proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And again, uh, plans for April. Yeah, I'll have every. I, I okay. hope to have everything for April. Okay. okay. All right, moving on. Friend of the youth, uh, Rick Laza. I, I moved to nominate Rick for this year's Friend of the Youth. He's done a lot for this, this school district. I didn't get to make the the dedication, but I got to watch it. Same it was here. in Nashville Same that here. weekend, but yeah. yep. and he was the guy that made that happen as right. well. Yeah. Not only did so he put it on, but he made it happen and, after and watch he, it. And he's done all the videos for the bond at the start, the finish. The, when I saw the name, I yeah, yeah. he's very deserving. Yeah. We have it moved by Joe, seconded by Jake, and I would also like to say that I don't think we could have picked a better person. This guy's been a part of this, not just community, but school district ever since he's been a student here so it's uh, he's a great asset he's a great public speaker he does a great job on the VA and the games and everything else so we I'm very happy with this choice so any more discussion okay um, all those in favor of Rick Laza's friend of the youth signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries all right next mr. Mueller varsity boys track coach Say anything about that, Joe? I mean, pretty straightforward. Yeah, we pretty straightforward. Last month. We had a red nation last month, and uh, Mr. Mueller stepped up to uh, provide some track for our boys' track program. And uh, I wish him well. I'm going to hire Mr. Mueller for the varsity boys' track coach. Moved by Joe, seconded by Jake. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Mueller. Good luck. <laughs> and thank you. They work free. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, new hire, Cade Walsh as the varsity baseball assistant coach. I think they have about 14. They talked a little bit about JV, but I don't want to uh, put forward a JV coach yet. Until I, I've heard that before. Hey, we got enough for JV. We got 28 kids out. And, by the time it's all said and done after that first week and it's cold and rainy and we're down to 20 kids or 18 kids and we don't have enough for a JV. So I think he's got enough kids to support his assistant, you know, with baseball. Obviously, they're doing a lot of different uh, skills and drills and, you know, we're dealing with the hard baseball and some bats. So um, I, I would say that would be good to have an assistant. We'll see on JV. They're going to have to show me the numbers and show me that it's consistent and that that's going to happen. We have a motion. I move to hire Kate Walsh as the varsity baseball assistant coach. Second. Moved by Joe. Second by Ryan. Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, to hire Brandon Dryeski as golf coach. Yeah, uh, basically Dave uh, Hansen resigned um, to do some other things and uh, left us open. Um, we've been kind of scrambling trying to find somebody. And, it's not been easy to fill. Uh, Brandon stepped up and uh, Aaron's recommending him. So number two, move to approve the hire of Brandon Drasky as golf coach. Second. Second. Moved by Joe, second by Tammy. Any more discussion? 
All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, 9.7, closed session. We're going to go into closed session for uh, discussing evaluation for the superintendent. And when we come back, we will simply be adjourning. So, I move to can, I, can I address one thing? Please? Sure. Um, I only want to address this just because so you in the off on the gallery know what the court of review is. Because you keep seeing it every court. It's like, man, this is pretends getting reviewed a lot. A quarterly review. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 so a quarterly review is simply we take our strategic plan. So the board has a strategic plan that we develop with teachers and community. And it's on our website. And so every quarter, I review that with the board in closed session. They then can talk about my evaluation, talk about how we're doing. And that's what a quarterly review is. And some goals. And some goals. We deal with some goals. All those things. So when you see that every quarter, we're trying to keep things of what are we doing in the school and dealing with my goals and those kind of things. So when you see that, you guys kind of know what it is. So it's not a probationary? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I just want everybody to know this. Guys, every quarter, he's, kind of he's, defensive. he's getting no. I'm not, I'm not. I just want to provide information. All right, well, we'll need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Moved by Tammy, seconded by Joe. Uh, roll call vote. Jake, aye. 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 Joe, aye. Tammy, aye. My vote is aye. We are now in closed session.